Welcome back to Straight Line MTV, and today we're gonna have the full review of the very sharp and cutting YT Izzo. Welcome back to Straight Line MTV, and today we're talking about the full ride review of the YT Izzo Pro Race. So I've had this bike for a little over two months, been put it through the ringer. I've ridden everything from nasty downhill to long cross country style rides. And I have enough experience on this bad boy to give you my thoughts and a full review. So let's talk about the specs on our pro race version. So it is a full carbon frame, which is good. Keeps it nice and light. It comes with the X01 Eagle drivetrain. So you're getting that really nice and light X01 cassette. The rear derailleur also has some carbon on it to keep it nice and light. Comes with that X01 carbon cranks. Again, another nice light item. Um, X01 shifter. The brakes are the SRAM G2 RSC. So they're just one step down from the best. Um, we did swap those for the Magura MT Trail Sports, which we will talk about here in a minute. Um, comes with the real nice and thin SRAM grips. And that is in order to accommodate that RockShox lockout lever on the left side. It comes with a nice carbon bar from Raceface. It's the next, it's a 760 millimeter wide, 35 millimeter clamp. Also comes with the Raceface turbine stem. It's a 60 millimeter. Now the, one of my favorite parts of this bike is the suspension package. So it comes with the Fox factory 34 fork. Um, so I see that, you know, at my weight, I'd normally like a 36, but I think for the weight savings and kind of the, the idea for this bike is a 34 is fitting. It's 130 millimeters in the front. It comes with a fit four damper. So it has a three position instead of the separate low speed and high speed. I think it's appropriate for this bike. I didn't feel like I ever wanted to fiddle with any of the settings. Cause this bike, you know, it's not a super big plush bike that you're gonna wanna dial it in. I mean, some people might want to, but I'm more interested in kind of a set and forget and go. And so the rear shock, again, it's a factory from Fox. It just has the lockout lever from the handlebar. So it's open and closed and it does have the rebound adjustment. Now the wheels are one of the big ticket items on this bike. It's the XMC 1200 by DT Swiss, and these are like $2,800 retail. So that's a big ticket for the spec of this bike, which is really amazing uh, for what you get for $5,200. It comes with, you know, just the high in there, 1,550 grams-ish on my scale. And that's pretty crazy light. And they're deemed as all mountain wheels. So you can kind of smash on them. I have changed those wheels to the aluminum set, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. The tires that are wrapped around a stock are the Max's Forecasters and the Exo Casing. They're just a dual compound, uh, 2.35. Um, your dropper post, again, matches your suspension. It's that blinged out gold Fox factory. It's 150 millimeters. I would have liked to see maybe 170 on our large, because as you can see, I have it pulled out a couple inches from the bottom. So I could use a little bit more legroom, but I've been got used to it, wasn't it? Big problem. It's one thing to note is that inside the main part of the frame, it's not tube in tube. So if you are gonna switch anything out in the, on the frame, just be prepared that you're gonna have to fish it out. Some other frame manufacturers will have the tube inside. So you just push it through. This one, while it wasn't horribly difficult, it was more work than I had expected because the cable port opening ports here are not very big. Um, and then brakes again, they expect this bike with a 200 millimeter front rotor, which I really, really appreciate. So YT is not a bike that you can go to your bike shops and buy. You are going to go on the website, click buy now, and they're gonna ship it to you. So you're not getting that bike shop experience with the concierge service that you would, but I like what Canyon and YT are doing. So you're getting your bike, you're opening it up. There's a box and box and box, and it all says, hey, open open me first, or, you know, I'm next. And it has a manual and it has all the tools you need, shock pump, pedal wrench, and torque wrench in this case, and all the things that get you going. So they do do a good job at giving you that personal experience. While you're not at a bike shop and be able to take it back, I think they put thoughtfulness 
and they give you a better customer experience. And some of the other brands, while they're not doing bad, I think YT and Canyon just really step it up a little bit more and make you feel a little bit more comfortable with buying a bike online. So I was very nervous and excited at the same time to, to pull the trigger on the YT because it is the most XC trail bike bike that I have owned. Uh, the only bike I can really compare this to is the Orbea Occam. So on the downhills, I've taken this on long cross country rides, almost 30 miles. I took it on our local test loop where it's smooth jumps, berms, and really nasty, rocky, chunky garbage. And then some nice hairpin turns as well. I will say I was very, very surprised. So some of the other reviews that I've read were saying, you know, that might get a little bit skittish in the fast, chunky stuff, which of course, yes, a bike, you know, with a 1209 millimeter wheelbase, 130 millimeter front and rear. It's not going to be a downhill monster, but what I did not expect is how much fun this bike was. So speaking of how fun this bike is, it's the bike that if you see a little rock on the side of the trail, you're going to jump off it, or even just the smallest undulation in the trail, you're going to just, you're going to try to whip this thing because it's so light and it's poppy and it's playful. It just wants to bounce around the trail. This thing, it just rips. You can just smash through those corners and hop off the, the jumps. And I was getting more air. Again, just like our Bay Occam, like you're just popping up and it's just wanting to climb in the air. So you're gonna have to kind of scale it back a little to get used to this bike. Cause coming off those big heavy bikes, you gotta put more effort to get them off the ground. And then into the just fast steeps, that's where this bike gets a little bit nervous. So if you're plowing real fast and it's steep, that's where that shorter wheelbase, it doesn't give you as much confidence. So you just dial back the speed a little bit and then you're able to have some fun and just pop off the rocks and those type of things. But some of our trails have just real, they have a fast, steep, rocky section into a hairpin turn. Holy cow, that's where this bike was super fun because some of those turns I couldn't make it on our bigger bikes while I was slowing it down. This thing just smashed right through it. Uh, and then going into the black diamond, just loose, nasty chunk. That's another area where this bike, you know, wasn't, wasn't confidence inspiring, of course, because it is a smaller bike, but it still handled the trail admirably. I had a good time just finding different lines down these trails. And that's really what this bike did for me is it was a bike that had me look at my trails differently. I was able to enjoy them in a whole different way um, where I'm able to pop and just kind of skid out and turn and take different lines, which was really exciting. It was almost like when you take your bike out at night and ride a trail at night, it just feels like a different trail. So it brought a lot of fun to the to the experience of my local trails where sometimes you can get bored. So the Orbea Occam that we reviewed, I keep saying in almost all our reviews what a great climber that bike was until I met the YT Izzo. This thing, I think, kind of blows the uh, Occam out of the water as far as climbing, especially when you flip that switch, that lockout switch on the bike. It feels like you have a motor in your legs. It's just a light, snappy climber, and it's ready to go. You push that thing, especially on flats. You just hit it, and it's go. Our climbs are some short technical sections, and in those areas, the bike did really well. What I did notice, though, is when you're really trying to grunt up those super steep uh, sections of the climb, I would feel the front end raise a little bit. And I think that's due to the shorter wheelbase. I did notice there is some pedal bob in the open position. Um, I'm the type that if there's a lockout switch and now a super convenient right next to your hand lockout switch, I'm going to use it. Um, on the really rocky climbs, I didn't use it. You want to get that extra traction. So I left it open on some of the gnarlier stuff, but on the smoother climbs or even on the flats or paved roads, you you switch that thing and man, you're gone. It feels really, really good. And then on those climbs, being so light, you're left with so much more energy. I was really surprised that, that, you know, I'm at mile 12 and I'm ready to push even harder and go and go and go because this bike is just prepared to just ride as long as you want. Whereas if I'm on the bigger Metas or the new proof Mega, I'm getting tired around mile 15 and ready to go pack it up and go home. That's where the YT really saves your energy and pushes you really hard. I've... So now let's talk about some of the things that I swapped out for my own personal preference. So the biggest one is the, the wheel set. So the XMC 1200 carbon wheels, I know that's a highlight and probably one of the draws to this build. I originally pulled those wheels off and didn't even ride them, but the 
Curiosity got the best of me and I did put them on and ride it. It was my first experience with carbon wheels. Uh, and I, I honestly, I didn't like the feeling of that because this bike already being 130 millimeters and more snappy, I'm more of a downhill focused rider. So it gave a little bit more feedback than I liked. I did like the compliance that an aluminum wheel set gives you. So I did swap back some aluminum wheels. I actually bought a new set of XM1501s by DT Swiss. So those are reasonably light. So I think that was a good trade off for me, a little bit heavier, but I do like the feeling of aluminum wheels. And so the brakes, the SRAM G2 RSEs, while very nice four piston brakes, they lacked some power. So I did go to the Magura MT Trail Sports. So those, those Maguras, they have a four piston front and a two piston rear. And even just the two piston rear from the Magura felt more, more powerful than the SRAM. So I think that was more of an upgrade and I do appreciate having that extra stopping power. Um, obviously I changed the saddle. I changed it for the WTV Coda. It's a women's specific saddle, but don't knock it till you try it because it feels real good. For pedals, I got the Deity Death Trap. They're probably a little bit more on the downhill focus, but it's a flat pedal. It's a big flat pedal and I do love them. They're really sticky and grippy. And as far as tires, so on the front, I put a DHF 3C XO Plus. That's just a tire I'm really comfortable with. And I think this bike is a bike that can do more than I would than you would think. So having that extra traction than the Forecaster, the Forecasters are a little bit on the thin side. On my second ride, I tore a sidewall, which is the first time I've ever torn a sidewall on a tire. So what I did is I found a Vittoria Goma, which is, they're out of stock everywhere, but I found that in the 2.5 version and I'm running that in the rear. Some constructive feedback. I have to start with the lockout on this bike. It has worked really well up until about the last four rides. So this bike comes uh, twist to lock. So it's static position is open. So it's not a horrible problem that it comes unlocked on the climbs but it does seem like it's losing its ability to stay. So I did buy a backup uh, lever to switch that out. So I'll be doing that. Another thing is the bar. So I think this is where YT should and may already be going to the drawing board. And I think that 60 millimeter stem, it just feels too long. You kind of feel like you're a little bit stretched out. I was planning to change it for either a 50 millimeter or maybe even a 40 millimeter stem just to kind of bring it back in a little bit. And also the bar, 760, I mean, maybe five, 10 years ago, that was pretty wide. I think right now 780 is the minimum. I think I would like to see a 780 millimeter wide bar. Um, and then back to the grip, the grip lockout. I think they should ditch that whole SRAM rock shops lockout and just go with some type of push button, something that's not gonna have as much issues as what I've seen the people are having. And then one other gripe I do have about this bike and it's actually kind of a big deal to me is on the down tube, there's no protection. They did put a very thin piece of helicopter tape there, but it doesn't have a rubberized bumper like 90% of bikes do in this price point. So I really like to see YT do that because that bottom bracket section of the down tube is really wide. I did put some lizard skins uh, protection on there that's some thick like leather style stuff to protect it, but It'd be nice to see if you're spinning this much that they are having that extra detail to keep that area nice and fresh because it gets smacked around quite a bit. So what's the straight line on the YT Izzo? I'm gonna tell you that it is a bike that you are gonna appreciate how light it is, how snappy in the pedals it is. And honestly, I was very surprised on how capable it is for a 130 millimeter trail bike that kind of leans a little bit cross country. This thing was a blast. I had a great time on it. And I'm very happy that I decided to kind of look into a category that I'm not used to riding on. It's a good departure for some of those big, huge bikes where oftentimes I'm overbiked. This bike really told me, hey, you are probably overbiked for most of our local trails. So it was really fun to be able to push it and do some 30 plus mile rides. And hopefully it helps me get in shape if it can only keep the tacos out of my face. Thank you for joining me as I talk about this awesome bike, the YT Izzo. We appreciate your support. We appreciate all our followers, Instagram, on YouTube, TikTok. Thank you so much for all the support that you've given us. Keeps us going. 
Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at straightline underscore MTV so you can see what we're doing on a daily and get some more updates on bikes we're riding and what we're doing and what kind of products we're buying because we're always buying something. Also on TikTok, we're trying to ramp it up on TikTok to do some interesting stuff for you there and straightlinemtv.com. Thank you so much again. Don't forget, give us a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel. We very much appreciate it. And we will see you on the next video. All right, guys. All right. <laughs> Just over 37 pounds, like 37. No. 37? It was 27. So this... So the, this... The particular... Chaka, chaka, chaka. So this pro race model comes in at give them price. Okay, awesome. Just... All right.